It is the holy of holy. Glory to God. In Jesus' name. Amen. We have the blood of Jesus. Yes. What a great blessing. Thank you, Jesus. His shed blood Thank has you, brought us into the Thank throne you, room of grace and mercy. Thank you, Jesus. We no longer need bulls and goats. No, no. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. What a glorious thing. Thank you, Jesus. That he has cleansed us and made us whole. Thank you. He has put his spirit in us. Thank you, Jesus. And we are seated with him. Thank you, Jesus. In heavenly places yes, this morning. Lord. We are spirit Thank you, Jesus. Power above the principalities Thank you, and the powers and the rulers of the dark. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. We have cleansed this temple Thank here you, with the blood of Jesus Thank this morning. You, Jesus. So we enter, Thank as the table said before, a banquet, a banquet of praise, a banquet of work, a banquet of blessings, a banquet of blessings, praise, Thank you, come and taste, Thank you, come and relax Thank you, in his presence, come as your arm, in Jesus' name, with pure hands and clean hearts. Thank you. In Jesus' name, Thank you, Jesus. in the unity of the Holy Spirit, Thank you. Thank you. Lord, we will be of one accord, just like the were in the upper room, in one accord, and see what happens when they were in one accord, in the great outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Thank you. and we are in one accord. Thank you, the choir will sing as never before. Oh, yes. The word will go forth with power in the name of Jesus. There will be none of our flesh up in there. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Praise your Lord. Praise your Lord. What a joy. What a joy to be in our presence this morning, Lord. Let us enter into that joy. This is the day that the Lord has made for us. Praise God. We were rejoiced and we were glad in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, we ask that you bless and honor the word this morning. We are reading this morning from uh, Revelation 13, chapter 13. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And the dragon stood on the shore of the sea, and I saw a beast coming out of the, the sea. He had ten horns and seven heads, and ten crowns on his horns, and on each head a blasphemous name. The beast I saw resembled a leopard, but had feet like those of a bear, and a mouth like that of a lion. The dragon gave the beast his power, and his throne, and great authority. One of the heads of the beast seemed to have a fatal wound, but the fatal wound had been healed. The whole world was astonished and followed the beast. Men worshipped the dragon because he had given authority to the beast. And they also worshipped the beast and asked, Who is like the beast? Who can make war against him? The beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies and to exercise his authority for 42 months which is three and a half years. He opened his mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name and his dwelling place and those who live in heaven. He was given power to make war against the saints and to conquer them. And the saints and to conquer them. And he was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nations. All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast, all whose names have not been written in the book of life, belonging to the Lamb that was slain from the creation of the world. He who has an ear, let him hear. If anyone is to go into captivity, into captivity he will go. If anyone is to be killed with the sword, with the sword he will be killed. This calls for patient endurance and faithfulness on the part of the saints. Praise the Lord. Then I saw another beast coming out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, but he spoke like a dragon. He exercised all the authority of the first beast on, the, on his behalf and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose fatal wound had been healed. And he performed great and miraculous signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to earth in full view of men. Because of the science, he was given power to do on behalf of the first beast. He deceived the inhabitants of the earth. He ordered them to set up an image in honor of the beast, 
who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. He was given power to give bread to the image of the first beast so that it could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. He also forced everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on his right hand or on his forehead, so that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of the, his name. This calls for wisdom. If anyone has insight, let him calculate the number of the beast, for it is man's number. His number is 666. Six, six. Praise the Lord. So that is all. Um, and there's a few little notes which I'll read here uh, on chapter 13, which are quite interesting. A beast coming up out of the sea, it's, it's, it's in chapter, verse 1, describes the conflict between the Antichrist and God and his people during the tribulation. The beast coming out of the sea is history's final great world government, consisting of ten kingdoms under the control of the Antichrist. The sea represents many nations. Satan gives his power to this government and uses it against God and his people. For the angel's explanation of the beast, uh, <clears throat> the, there's further uh, revelation on that if you go to chapter 17, verse 8, about what the angel said, the same exact same thing. The beast here, the same beast of verse 1 represents, this is verse 2, not only the end time Gentile world kingdom, but also the king of that kingdom. The beast is a person as cruel as a beast who will gain the political and religious power of the world at that time. He is called the man of lawlessness or the antichrist. Um, and anti means instead of. Thus the antichrist may claim, claim he is the real Christ, the true Messiah. So he will deceive people. He will make a covenant with the nation of Israel. So it talks then in verse 3 about the fatal wound that he receives. It appears to the whole world that the Antichrist has suffered a fatal wound. Fatal means a deadly wound. But is brought back to life again by Satan's supernatural power. We know that Satan performs miracles. It's a known fact that the demonic can perform miracles. So he is a counterfeit for everything God has. Uh, evidently, God will permit Satan to try to duplicate Christ's power. This may be Satan's chief means of deceiving the human race. So people will be deceived then and they'll think, God done this miracle. But no, it was the Satan who done that miracle. Um, uh, and verse 7 says he will make war against the saints during the tribulation people will have to choose whether to follow the easy and popular way of the new religion or to believe in Christ and remain faithful it will be popular it will be modern but we know that Christ's way is the only way. He says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. We know that he is the only way to the Father. Uh, those who remain faithful to God and his word will be persecuted and possibly killed. He will conquer them, not in the sense that their faith is destroyed, but in martyrdom of many. That means killing of many. Martyrdom means killing. For 42 months, the Antichrist will make war against the saints. In verse 8, all will worship the beast, it says. The Antichrist declares himself to be the deity and, and possesses supernatural power of the demonic world. Accordingly, he will be worshipped. The religion of the Antichrist, in other words, teaches the doctrine of the divinity of humanity. We teach the divinity of Christ, don't we? Not of humanity. Instead, of the truth that in Christ, Christ, God becomes flesh. He speaks the lie that in, in himself, humanity has and can become God. New Age teaching today emphasizes this doctrine of the Antichrist and may be preparing the masses for the ultimate acceptance. So there are already, Satan's already preparing people for this. He's already preparing the grandparents probably, or the great grandparents of these children, you know, that will be born whenever Jesus decides to come. 
Um, the lamb that was slain from the creation, we know that that's Christ. Christ's redemptive death for the salvation of humanity was decreed from the very beginning of the creation of the world. It was decreed from the very beginning that he was the lamb that was going to be slain. Then it talks about another beast. This other beast will assist the first beast, directing the world to worship the Antichrist and misleading humanity by working great miracles. He is also referred to as the false prophet. An image of the Antichrist will probably be placed in God's temple. This two horns, horn, it has two horns like a lamb, signifies his attempt to deceive by betrayal by portraying himself to be a loving and gentle character uh, and a caring person. You know, a, a lamb is a gentle creature. So he's deceiving the people by portraying himself as being this gentle creature. In reality, however, his character is not like that of a lamb, but that of a dragon, a dragon. Um, so in, in verse 12, it says, worship the first beast. The second beast will promote an ecumenical false church that will worship the Antichrist. He will bring this about largely by performing great signs and wonders. So people, it, because it says in the end is, even the elect will be deceived. We are the elect of God, so we cannot be deceived. But it says some elect will be deceived because they will see these and they will mistake them as God's work. They will mistake them as God's work. But we know, we know that there's a counterfeit there and we'll be on the lookout. But praise God, we've begun in the rapture before all this happens. Uh, his ministry will in some way counterfeit the supernatural ministry of the Holy Spirit. Um, some refuse to worship the image uh, and they will be killed. A decree will be given to kill all who refuse to worship uh, the world ruler and his image. In other words, many who resist the Antichrist and remain faithful to Jesus will pay with their lives. So it talks then you get a mark on your forehead or your hand. The Antichrist will seek to gain total economic control of the world. We thought at one time it was impossible that we have a, a European um, uh, currency. It came and went, it's, it's there and it, wasn't, it was easy bringing it about. It would be very easy to bring about a world currency and a world government. See how airlines are amalgamating and all the things are amalgamating together. So there'll be a couple of great powers. You know, we see it already, things have amalgamated. You know, <clears throat> institutions and things like that, amalgamating together. So um, um, when you receive this mark on your hand, your forehead or your hands, uh, you will be neither in order that you will be able to buy or sell. But if you refuse, you won't. Identifying the followers of the world's religion promoted by the Antichrist, those who refuse to take the mark will be hunted down in order to be killed. Praise the Lord. But the Lord will supernaturally sustain them. And his number is 666. Although the Antichrist is called the beast throughout Revelation, his number is 666. Many uh, uh, commenters uh, believe that six is the number of humanity in scripture and three is the number for God. Therefore, the three size, size, sixes uh, could very well refer to a man who makes himself God, G-O-D in a small God, uh, like the Roman emperors and many both before and after them, he, he, he believes he is a God. Praise the Lord. So that's all it has to say. But I think it, 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 it irons it out fairly well. Fairly well. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we need not worry. We keep ourselves pure and holy in the sight of God. We keep ourselves without blemish. We repent of any wrongdoing momentary as we do. And we keep holy. We keep holy. That is our job. We to love one another. That loving is very important. He establishes us that we love one another and that we live in unity. That we live in unity. This is what's required of us. And we tell others about Christ. And we promote God's kingdom down here. We are kingdom promoters here. We are priests and kings in Jesus' name. We call on Pastor Ollie now to do the, the psalm. Is it Ollie? Yeah. No. It's you. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. What a new day. Hallelujah. We give God praise. Hallelujah. Our lives.
we are in the right place at the right time and the right spirit. And God is helping us. Hallelujah. What a joy to see the end of uh, the last Sunday in September. It's a, a glorious thing. Hallelujah. I just want us to read before we take Psalm 92. Can we read um, Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 1, please? Deuteronomy 20. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Deuteronomy 20, verse 1. Okay, let's read together, please. When you go to war against your enemy and see horses and chariots and an army greater than yours, do not be afraid of them. Turn your neighbor say, neighbor. Do not, not be afraid of them. Hallelujah. Do not be afraid of them. Hallelujah. Do not be afraid of them. Do not be afraid of them. Do not be afraid of them. This is what God is saying to us. Because the like we are just finished revelation, the days are going to be evil. So many things are going to happen, but do not be afraid. God is telling us, do not be afraid. Hallelujah. Because he gives us the reason. That because the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, will be with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Look back. He brought us January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. He will bring us through. That same God has carried us. He is going to carry us through. Do not be afraid. Don't let anything terrorize you. Why? Because the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, will be with you. Hallelujah. It's a promise. And this is God speaking, not man. You see, when you go to the Old Testament, you only hear, thus says the Lord. It's God speaking. And when you come to the New Testament, it's thus says Jesus. He does that speaking. So it's important. Anything God says will always come to pass. Hallelujah. Psalm 92. Psalm 92. Thank you, Jesus. Ramasatayaba. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 92. Let's read together, please. A song, a song of Sabbath day. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High. To declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night. I hope you're doing that. Yes, yeah, every night. Now go back to that verse 2. What do we do every day? To declare your loving kindness in the morning. Every morning we declare it. And then in the night, what? His faithfulness. Every night. Praise the Lord. Continue. On an instrument of ten strings, on the flute and on the harp, with harmonious sound. For you, Lord, have made me glad through your works. I will triumph in the work of your hand. Oh Lord, oh Lord how great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. A senseless man does not know, nor does a foolish understand this. When the wicked spring up like grass, and when all the workers of iniquity flourish, it is that they will be destroyed forever. Don't envy their flourishing. Hallelujah. But you, Lord, are on high forevermore. For behold, your enemies, O oh Lord, for behold, your enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. For my heart, you have exalted like a wild ox. I have been anointed with fresh oil. My eyes also have seen my desire of my enemies. My ears hear my desire of the wicked who rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still be bearing fruit in old age. You can see, Pastor Mary. They shall be fresh 
and flourishing. <laughs> to declare that the Lord is upright, he is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We take our song, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. We join the 24 elders to sing hallelujah and worship our God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Holy, 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 Lord.
Lord, I praise you, Lord God, we give you glory, Lord. I thank you, Lord God. I magnify your name, Lord God. We worship your name, Lord God. For you alone are worthy, Lord God. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb who sits upon the throne. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord God. We worship you with all the angels of heaven, Lord God. We magnify your name, Lord God. walk away you know that's not being appreciated 
You know what I mean? That's not just that's not being appreciated. You know, because a thousand a million euro is not small money. You know, it's not small money. So when somebody gives you a million euro, you do a proper thanks, a proper thanksgiving. You know, so it's the same with God. What God has done in, done in our life, it's not small. Yeah. You know, it's a big thing what God has done in our life. Yeah. You know, it's not a small thing. No, so when we give thanks to God, we give thanks to God properly. You know, in Second Corinthians 4, verse 15, it says, For all things are for your sake, that grace, having spread through many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. You know, God has given a scissor, having spread through the many. You know, sorry, he says, that grace, having spread through the many. Grace. We've been showing, we've been shown grace. Like, we're all destined for hell. You know, we're all destined for hell. Like, all of us. Doesn't matter whether you like um, whether it's a small sin, like uh, as the word would say, small sin, big sin. No, the word cat I like, put sin in the bracket. No, but God looks at all sin the same. He doesn't look at murder worse than saving a bar of chocolate. You know, he or lying. He doesn't look at murder worse than lying. No, he looks at the same. If we lie and we don't like we we've never made murder in our life and we lie and we don't repent of that lie, we're destined for hell. You know, and that's the grace that we've been shown. It says there that grace having spread through the manly may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. You know, it's to the glory of God. Everything goes back to God. Our thanksgiving goes back to God. I've written down here. It says like uh, it says because of what God has done for us we have to give him thanks we are his bond servants then i've written as soon as we release uh, sorry as soon as we realize we are his servants we do we do as he wills and as we do as he wills he will show us favor which draws us back to giving him thanks no we are god's servants we do as god's wills when we become born again Christians, we give up our way of living, our way of doing things. You know, and sometimes God brings about change. You know, like I was, I listened to you preaching there, there the other day, um, like on God TV, and like the pastor was saying that when God cha does a new thing within a church, you know, some people don't like it. You know, he was sharing the testimony of this church in America. The guy had thousands upon thousands of people in his church. You know, and God started doing a new thing, but the pastor didn't want to change to what God was doing. And now he can't even get a thousand in his church. You know, because he never changed. No, he wanted to say, uh, like, a, like a, the old time religion. You know, but God's doing a new thing. Like, and when God does a new thing, it's a shake-up. No, God, God, God does a shake-up sometimes. No, sometimes he, like, um, and, and we've seen it happen, you know, we've seen it happen where God does a shake-up, where people, people, and, and people fall off. You know, when God shakes, there's a shaking, people fall off. You know, and those that are left are the strong ones. You know, and those are the ones, the, the, those that are left is the ones that God is going to use. In Jeremiah 30, verse 9. Sorry, verse 19, sorry. Jeremiah 30, verse 19, sorry. It says, Then out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of those who, who make merry, I will multiply them, and they shall not diminish. I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. Amen. That's God's promise. You know, that is God's promise. Okay? And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of those who make merry. Like we all know what merry is, don't we? No, like in, in this world we, we uh, what do you call it? We say merry is like people that are drunk. 
you know, because we say, oh, look, they're happy, they're happy, they're hyper, and because they, they have a few jars. But that, that's not what this is talking about. This is talking about when you're full of the Holy Spirit. You know, you're full of the Holy Spirit, and you're happy. No matter what God does, you're still, you remain happy. You know, because God, God is what he, and he says, I will multiply them. Amen. That's what he's going to do to Foundation Ministries. He says, and they shall not be diminished. You know, foundation ministries will not be diminished. Amen. And he says, I will all I will also glorify them. Amen. God's going to glorify foundation ministries. And they shall not be small. Amen. Foundation ministries is not small. Amen. And you and it would never be small. No matter what people are saying out there. You know, God's going to shut their mouths. God's going to put them to shame. You know, because he's going to make Foundation Ministries big. Amen. Because Foundation Ministries, who's, like, look at the name. Foundation. Our foundation is Jesus. Our foundation, we're built on the foundation of Jesus. Not on the foundation of man, but on the foundation of Jesus. Amen. Colossians 3, 17. Amen. <laughs> and whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Amen. Amen. Everything is done through Jesus. Everything is done through Jesus. Even giving thanks to God is done through Jesus. Not through man. Not through saints. You know, true nobody except true Jesus. Amen. You know, and here it says, In everything we do, we have to give thanks to God the Father, true Jesus. Everything must go, everything must be done through Jesus, just like I said. Amen. James chapter 1, verse 17. James 1, 17. Every good gift. And every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no verif verification or sh ver verification. My variation. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> My English is very blessed. Our shadow of turning. Amen. You know, every good gift. And every per and every perfect gift is from above. So everything good comes from God. Nothing bad. Nothing bad comes from God. So everything good, even the gifts that we have, so the perfect gifts have come from above. Yes. You know, Amen. God has given us all gifts, though, yes. so, and they come from heaven. They don't come from man. No, no. You know, Amen. it's not because you know uh, uh, I am talented. You know, like the like the thing the thing the word is oh I'm very gifted I'm me 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 I I I I the I syndrome, you know. But we forget where it comes from. Yeah. No, it comes from God. You know, it comes from God, and God and God gives us those gifts to use them. He doesn't give us the gifts to sit to sit down on them. No, because like we see we see in the Bible when there's hands given out, and one. One didn't do the right thing, though, and the talent was taken from him. You know, so like we have to use our gifts, though, and like we're all gifted in different ways. You know, we're, we're all gifted in different ways. Like me, like when I see the, the lads and the keyboard, the, the drums, the bass. You know, like that's a special gift. Like like uh, what they were saying yesterday. You know. Well, Joseph, you know, the way he can just pick up music, like when he, like, I'm just by this, but he put it, you know, that's a gift from God, you know, it's a gift from God, you know, and it's giving glory back to God, amen? Right. amen. Psalms 92, verse 1. A psalm, a song for the Sabbath day. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to, to, to your name, O Most High. Amen. 
confirmation. That was the sand this morning. You know, it says the sand of the savage, you know. And it's good to give thanks to God. You know, and it's not just once a month we give thanks to God. We give thanks to God every day of our life. Every day. When we wake up in the morning, when we fall asleep, like we just see it there, you know, when we fall asleep at night, before we fall asleep, we give thanks to God for the day. No, it's very, very important that we that we give thanks. You know, and like I said, it wasn't like when I started to come to Foundation Reasons, just like for me, I've never seen a church that does the Thanksgiving, you know, at the end of every month. Like for me, like maybe there's other churches, like other, like um, church, like uh, let's just say, let's just say, uh, what's it called? Uh, white churches or my culture, Irish churches are, like even when I was over in England, I'd never seen it, you know, and even here in Ireland, I've not, like, like for me, I've never seen it. Now maybe it happens, but like for the churches I've been to, I've never seen it. No, where, where at the end of every month we give we give thanks to God. At Daniel two twenty three. I thank you and praise you, O God, of my fathers. You have given me wisdom and might, and have now made and, and have now made known to me what we ask of you, for you have made known to us the king's demand. Amen. This, you know, like a uh, here. This was a uh, Daniel. You know, this is Daniel giving God thanks. You know, the wisdom that Daniel had. You know, and everything that, he, like even the, like um, every gift that Daniel had, he gave thanks back to God. You know, the prophecy, the word, like the advice that he was giving to the king, and everything, he never took glory for it. You no, know, he gave it back to God. You know, because we are just vessels that God has chosen to use. You know, me. Like as you as you see, my speech is not perfect. You know, my English is not perfect. But like but I've met myself willing to be used by God. Like get like being up here for me, being up here is in the flesh is hard. You know? Like I, I know I'm a talkative person, you know. Like sometimes people have to tell me tell me to shut up talking. You know? And I like I, I think it's a gift I've taken from dad. You know, it's one of the things I've taken that Dad would never shut up. You know? And that I I know I knew with Dad, like with Dad growing up at night time. At night time. Because he had he had, had his rest during the day. You no, know, he would go and put, put, like, he would go for his afternoon rest and he'd sleep for about two, three hours. And then he'd get up. Uh he'd be up well, I kind of like I I would scatter. You know, people like my, my brothers and sisters who said, you know, how do you get away with it? <laughs> you know, I would lock myself in the living room watching TV and while they were in there getting preached at. You know, until, like, was, like I remember once my sister, when she was working, she'd come home from work and my dad would be preaching to her until like 2 or 3 in the morning. You know, and she'd just get home from work. You know, and my mom, and, and you can tell they were tired. But they are too scared to move, <laughs> you know. But I think that's one of the gifts I've gotten from my dad, the talkative gift, you know. But doing this, it's like, it's only by the anointing, like, God's was like last week now, when I was um, reading the passage of Psalms last week, and you've seen, I, I, like, seen all those names, I couldn't pronounce them. When I went home, the devil stopped lying to me. You know, and then I started like I went on God TV, and this pre like this preacher came on and like he was explaining how like his English was bad, you know, and how you know he didn't realize that he was touching through his message, you know, because he looked down and said, like, I see like he, he he had his own insecurities, you know, and that encouraged me, you know, it stopped them from lying, and you know, you know but. It's when you make yourself, like going back to, it's when you make yourself as a, as a vessel to be used by God, it's when God used you. Because God doesn't look at, you know, whether you're black, whether you're white, whether you're Irish, English, American, Jamaican, whatever. God doesn't look at that. 
No, he looks at the heart of a man. Yeah. Amen. You know, and there's another thing that came to me. You know, no, like um, there that came to me uh, as I was saying there says when Paul says I became all things to all people. You know, and like I was tell, I think I was I was saying to you about your moment there last week, but God showed me through that scripture because uh, I, I used to have that attitude where. The, like uh, the Africans, the Nigerians, when they come to Ireland, they have to adapt to our way of doing things. And God, and God said, uh, and they're, like, and, and I used to always think that, you know me, because what Paul said. But God, like there last week, when I was um, thinking about, like, it just came into my head and I was praying. And God says to me, look, Ollie, you have to adapt to, to, to the Nigerian way of doing things. Because that goes to you too, Ollie. You know that it's not just for the like um, when when um, another culture comes into your country, they have to adapt to you. No, you have to adapt to them too. You have to take on some of their, you know, and to make life is to make life easy for everybody. That's what it's about. It's to make life easy for everybody. Okay. Sorry, I'm just jumping it. No, going off topic now. <laughs> Psalms 30 verse four. Amen. Psalm 30 verse 4 says, Sing praise to the Lord. You sing praise to the Lord, you saints of, of his, and give thanks to the re remembrance of his holy name. You know, we're we're to give thanks to God because of who he is. You know, not because like of anything he does for us, just simply because of who he is. No, just simply it says there for the just to just to remember his holy name is just to give thanks. You know, because sometimes like like and sometimes like um, I'm talking to myself now when I say this as well. That's why I say we. I'm never to say we instead of saying you. Amen. Because it's one thing that I like that um, like I'm so like so get caught up in saying you 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 when the topic the the proper thing to say is we. Because I'm including myself, so when we uh, look at look at this, you know, like sometimes we, we become to we come to the place where we have a relationship with God. All we, all we do is ask, 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 ask. You know, God give me this, God give me that. You know, like imagine imagine how if we if we treated our 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 spouses like that. You know, our parents like that. Give me, give me, give me, give me. And expect not, and, and expect not to give anything back. You know, it's a, it's the wrong attitude to have. You know, because when we give thanks to God, every need will be met. You know, every it's not saying that we don't ask for. You know, me, I'm not saying that. But sometimes we be like, and um, we can go back. It's all about me, 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 me. You know, and like, and that's where we have to. Yes, it's good to ask, because God says ask. You know, yes, it's good to ask. But what's important is that we give glory back to him. That's because that's what we, that's what we forget sometimes. We forget to come back and give glory. And it's not coming back just saying, Oh, thank you, God, for doing this. No, it's giving proper thanks. Amen. Um, Psalms 106 and verse 1. Psalms 106 and verse 1. Don't worry, I'm getting there. Praise the Lord. It says, Praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercies endures forever. Amen. God's mercies endures forever. No, we simply give him thanks because he's merciful. He has shown us mercy. You know, it's like what I said at the start. This is why we give thanks. No, because of mercy he has, he has shown us. Like through this year, through this year alone, like Look at this year alone. No, this year I think it's been one of the best years in history. You know, it's been one of the best years, but yet we are still standing here. We're still sitting here. We're still we're waking up in the morning. No, there's many people that have passed down, you know, this this year. You no, know, and this is why like we're here today because of what God it's not by our strength we are here today. It's not because oh we followed the COVID nineteen rules and regulations. No, it's not just because of that. Because God is one that has given us breath. 
you know, God he, and he's shown favor upon us. He's shown favor upon our lives. Now, we don't know the reason why the, the others were taken, you know, but that's, that's up to God. No, it's not up to us to question, you know, because like, like the Bible says, there's some, things, there's some things that God doesn't explain to us, you know, but we, but we will know when we get to heaven why. You know, but, 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 but what we do know is that because of this COVID 19, there has been a massive shake up. You know, massive, massive shake up, especially in the church. You now, God has really shocked the church. You know, and it, it, it's caused the church to kind of like uh, wake up. Like, we've been, like the, church, the church was taken out of its comfort zone you know, for a season. You no, know, like with, with the lockdowns and everything. You know, and it showed us. Like for me, what the lockdown showed me was how important getting together is. How important meeting each other on a Sunday is. It's not just about, you know, come, like the main thing is coming here in the world. You know, like, um, like it's not just about, like, um, like when we look at our church, like we see Thanksgiving service. No, we see night ritual. We see movie night. Those titles are not just there for title's sake. No, they're there for a reason. You know, they're there for us to meet together, to encourage each other, to build the, like as the Bible says, to build each other up in the faith. You know, that's what that's why it's important to meet together. Like watching church on so, like be, being at home watching church on social media. It's not right. No, it's not biblical. The Bible says do not, do not, um, what's called, give up on meeting together. You know, it's not good to be at home and thinking, oh, this is God's will for me to be at home watching, watching church on TV or watching church on social media. It's not, it's not healthy. You know, it's not healthy. Naturally, it, naturally it's not healthy. And spiritually, it's not healthy. You know, like, it, it's not healthy. Like, well, that, that was just for a season. You know, doesn't mean it doesn't mean it has to be forever. No, like the, the season that we had having church online and all that, that was just for a season. It doesn't mean it's, it, 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 we should be doing it forever. You know, First Corinthians fifteen verse fifty-seven. I've written down here. We give thanks to God because He He, he gives us victory over sin and death through his son it says but we but we put but thanks be to god who gives us the victory through our through our lord jesus christ amen he says god has given us a victory he's given us a victory over sin and death you know he's given us a victory over the enemy you know he's given us that victory we have the victory over the enemy because of what Jesus has done. No, it's true Jesus. You know, and then um, Romans, Romans 8.2. I think I, Romans 8.2. I'll just put this down as a kind of like a side, side note. Romans 8 verse 2. Says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Amen. We've been made free. That's what we give thanks God for. That we've been made free from the law of sin and death. Amen. It's because, like uh, it says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, we've been made free. Amen. And um, the last is First Chronicles 29, verse 13. It says, Now, therefore, our God, we thank you and praise and praise your glorious name. You know, we give thanks to God this morning, amen? You know, we give him thanks for, like, for what he has done in our life. You know, I give him thanks. You know, I know by right, you know, I, I shouldn't be standing here this morning, you know, but because of what God has done in my life, I am standing here, 
Lord, because of God's faithfulness. And I give him thanks. You know, I give him thanks. You know, like I, I know where I should be, but because of what God has done, you know. But but it's like it takes one to make the change. You no, know, I decided I made a decision in my life to make a change. You know, I had to say yes. You know, I had to say yes to God and no to the enemy and no to the things of this world. You no, know, it's by it's by our it's by our choice that we give thanks. You know, it's by our, by our own choice, by free will we give thanks. You know, and I give thanks to God, you know, for what He has done. You know, and I give thanks to you know, for everything he has done in, in my life. You know, and that's why like even like in each of us we give God thanks. We never forget what God has done. No, because as soon as we forget what God has done in our life, you no, know, we'll be we'll be back there because we think we've done it on our own. You know, like and that's why this says it's not by our law by might, but by the spirit of the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you, Pastor Ali. God bless you. Praise God. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord for that word of encouragement, that a good word of exhortation. Praise the name of the Lord. It's a good thing to thank the Lord. You know, because if we just go through the month without remembering that God is the one that has kept us through the month, from the beginning of uh, the month of uh, September right up to the end, it's the Lord that has taken care of us. It's the Lord that has sustained us. It's the Lord that has provided for us. He's the one who has given us good health. He has the, he's the one who has given us the bread of life. Praise the name of the Lord. That's why we set aside the final Sunday in every month to just say thank you. Praise the name of the Lord. And it's, the Bible says, as we see in the, uh, Psalm 92, it says, it's a good thing to thank the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And that's what we are going to do today. So we enter into the family by family. Praise the name of the Lord. And we call on the family of the Caribs. Hallelujah. To give thanks to the Lord for the month of September. Thank you. 